Hey everyone, my name is Shamir, but you probably already knew that if you're one of my millions of subscribers. Today I wanted to share with you all the stuff that I've done to bring the most form and function out of my smartwatch. At EFA 2014, Sony announced the Sony Smartwatch 3. As noted by ABI Research, the Smartwatch 3 has many new features, such as waterproof, improved styling, transition to Android wear, and introduction of a new wearable platform from Broadcom, utilizing a 1.2 GHz quad-core ARM Cortex-A7 processor, an improved GPS and ambient light sensor processing SOC capable of simultaneously tracking five satellite systems, GPS GLONASS, QSS, SBAS, and Baidao, and the now-popular Wi-Fi 802.11 NBT NFC FM quad combo connectivity chip and a highly integrated power management IC. <sighs> you see, dear viewer, I got this watch as a gift from my aunt and my grandmother. It was a very kind gesture on their part, and I appreciated knowing that I was in their thoughts enough for them to send me a gift like this. What I don't appreciate is whatever dumb f at Sony decided that they weren't going to allow this flagship smartwatch to have the latest features through Android Wear version 2.0. Now you might think, yikes Shamir, that's kind of a harsh response. But not only am I missing the latest watch faces, gizmos, apps, all of that, um, I'm unable to use the NFC chip that came built in with this smartwatch. Do you have any idea how much my Apple smartwatch friends flex on me? Whenever we go out to eat, for them it's just a simple tap with the wrist and they're good to go. They get to have the experience of just seamlessly paying for things. You know, it's, it's already one thing to have Google Pay on your phone. But the fact that they have it on their wrists and they get to have twice as fast of an experience that I do, I think is a real shame. And sure, yeah, it's kind of a first world problem, but you know, it, it is 2019, this watch supports it with its hardware, there's absolutely no reason for Sony to block it um, from being updated to Android Wear version 2.0. Now with that said, why don't we go take a look and see just how much hidden potential we can get out of this Sony smartwatch. At this point, dear viewer, you may have noticed that this isn't how the Sony smartwatch normally looks. That's because I made some changes. The regular Sony smartwatch has the case and wrist brand all in one silicone piece that wraps around the main body of the watch and goes around your wrist. Unfortunately, mine broke, so I had to find some kind of uh, new wristband adapter um, because I wanted to use my own custom straps for my wrist rather than the silicone style that all the Sony ones seem to be. Now, Sony also releases their own version of an official wristband adapter. Problem with that is it costs an arm, a leg, and the soul of my firstborn child. So I knew that I wasn't gonna be doing that. That's why I have this 3D printed 24 millimeter strap case. I ordered this off Shapeways, link in the description, and it's been the most professional and sleek looking model that I've been able to find. But I've also come across a very similar quality model as a purchasable .stl file for you to 3D print at home like I've done here on my fully modded under 3. Video coming soon. The last external modification will be using a magnetic micro USB head and Sugru as a sealant to make charging this much more convenient and wear and tear friendly for the long term. Normally there's a rubber flap that goes into the charging port and helps make it waterproof, but currently I've removed that and put this in. I don't have any Sugru or sealant right now to make this waterproof once again, uh, but that's why we want to flash all of our firmware first so that way we don't have to worry about having to use the USB port for data ever again and we can just simply use it for charging. But for right now it's been a really good add-on and it's made charging it a lot, a lot easier. To begin any sort of internal software modification, first what we have to do is unlock the bootloader. This allows us to essentially direct the device to boot up with whatever software we want instead of choosing anything else. The easiest way to do this is by physically putting the watch into fast boot mode. This is done by first turning off the watch. I just hold down the power button for about 10 seconds. Then very carefully, as you turn on the watch, keep holding the power button. Don't let go. You'll see the screen light up and then it will give you an insert USB um, prompt. We want to double click the power button and it would allow us to then uh, pick between fast boot, recovery, normal boot, and factory reset. We want to go back to fast boot and then double press the select key. The watch should now say running fast boot. 
At this point, you want to make sure you have the latest ADB and fast food drivers, both of which can be found by downloading the Android SDK and then making sure that you have all the proper um, packages just installed in the software. From there, we just want to connect our watch into our computer and run the following commands. More detailed instructions can be found in the XDA form link down below. The next step after unlocking the bootloader is installing our custom recovery software. What this will allow us to do is flash and install any sort of custom software packages on the go without having to interact with our computer right from the virtual SD card that's present in the smartwatch. Once you do have a custom recovery installed, you want to use Fastboot to boot directly into the recovery uh, because from what I've read, if you don't boot into the recovery right away, the stock software will overwrite the recovery and you'll have to flash it again. Um, one boot should be good enough, as far as I know, to make sure the problem doesn't happen. Uh, but keep that in mind. If you're booted into the TWRP custom recovery, you can just plug your watch into the computer and the computer should see it as an external storage. You can just drag and drop the ROM files right onto there and the rest of the flashing will be done right from the watch. I started this project with the main goal being able to use the NFC chip in the watch and be able to tap and pay. That's why for the longest time I've been running an outdated version of Android with modified NFC support. And while it did allow me to actually activate the NFC chip and be able to read tags and whatnot, the actual Google Pay app um, is only compatible with Android Wear versions 2.0 or above. Uh, which brings us back to the main problem of Sony just kind of locking away these features. So that's why I wouldn't really recommend this custom ROM. Uh, it also had a negative impact on my battery life and it wasn't compatible with my favorite watch face, which kind of sucked. But either way, link is in the description, you can check it out. Which brings us to this custom ROM, which was based on Android 6.0 and created by Alex6600 on the XDA forums. What this should do is allow me to have root access, kernel tweaks, under the hood modifications, and the biggest thing, much better battery life. This ROM comes in a 2-core version or a 4-core version, but I'm going with the 2-core version so I can save a bit more battery life because I'm not really going to be playing games on my smartwatch, I just need to check the time. Now that we have the files transferred over, it's just a simple matter of just going into the recovery and selecting the files to install. We do this the same way that we got into the fast boot, um, by waiting and pressing the power button until we get the insert USB prompt on boot, double tapping the side button, and then going through the options until we see recovery and double tapping that. And boom, team win recovery. From here you probably want to click wipe on the top right and then just slide across the screen and that should pretty much be the only wipe you need. Then, going back, we want to click on install and go down into the storage of the smartwatch until you find the file that you're looking for. In my case, I've already installed this because I wanted to make sure that the ROM was stable and working, um, so I'm not going to go through it again, but it's a simple click and wait process. And then from there, you just want to restart your watch and boom, you should be ready to go. That should pretty much be all of it. Uh, it's kind of easy, just a little bit of a pain in the ass. I know that it's not the most exciting topic, but it really did help bring some new life into my smartwatch. And I don't know, if you have the same one, you know, I think this should be a little helpful. If you thought that the video was nice, I would really appreciate it if you click the subscribe button. I know I already have millions of subscribers, but I could really use your help, and every single one of you guys is appreciated. So with that said, have a good day, and uh, I'll see you soon.